a last point in the topic of sampling regards the timing of the sampling. So um, we have discussed the Channon Nyquist theorem, which said that the maximum frequency must be less or equal than half of the sampling frequency. And in a real system, you choose an analog to digital converter, which has a sampling frequency of close to the maximum signal, which you want to process. Yeah, this is again uh, a reason of reduce, reducing cost. So faster analog to digital converters are generally more expensive. And so you try to reduce the cost by reducing the sampling frequency. And by this, you probably reach a point where your maximum signal is very close to half of the sampling frequency, like shown here in this example. And in the upper diagram, we have a perfect sampling, so it's very optimal. We always hit the maxima of our input function here. So we use uh, a sinusoidal function here, which is a monochromatic signal. And now the um, frequency of our monochromatic signal is exactly half of the sampling frequency. Yeah, so this is a boundary case, but um, it's good to describe the issue. So here in the upper diagram, our timing is optimal, but the sampling clock is normally not adjusted to our input signal. So it might happen that the sampling clock does not perfectly hit the maxima of the signal. So we get this sampling point. And now uh, the digital system does not see the green line, which is the original signal. And our digital signal only sees the red sampled data. And now it assumes that it has this function here. Yeah. This has two problems. So the um, first problem is that the amplitude is a bit lower. So there uh, is th the amplitude is decreased and there's a time shift here, so a, a phase shift. Um, and the phenomenon that is observed here is called the timing error. So we have a time timing error. But in this case, the signal is a bit weaker, but it can still be decoded by the digital processing system. But um, uh, this case is not optimal, but then we have a case where it, it is impossible to decode the signal. So now the timing error is so huge that we hit the zero crossings of the signal and the sampled and quantity signal would be constantly zero. So after the analog to digital conversion, there is, there is no signal. So we can say that the sampling clock is now orthogonal to our input signal. Again, uh, 
I write this down. Orthogonal. Orthogonality will come across several times throughout the lecture. Yeah. So here the consequence is that there is no signal at the output. So what we need to do is to adjust the phase of the sampling clock. So that we get the optimal c case. So we need to adjust the phase of the sampling clock. So we need some kind of controller which detects that we, for example, have the no, uh, non-optimal case here and then it adjusts the phase of the sampling clock so that the timing error is minimized and in the optimal case the timing, actor, uh, uh, timing error will become zero. There are several approaches which we will not discuss in detail. So if you are an RF engineer and have to design a um, system with an analog to digital converter, you should consider the timing error problem. And now we have s some structures here which are capable of reducing the timing error and this is called time recovery. So the first one, uh, one is a pure analog timing recovery. It has a component which predicts the timing error and then gives this information to the sampling clock so that it can adjust its phase. Then there can be a hybrid timing recovery with a closed loop controller. The input is sampled and now we are in the digital domain and then there is a component, for example a digital circuit or uh, maybe a computer software which calculates the timing error and this information is given back to the sampling clock. Actually the sampling clock is part of the analog domain. Uh, however, the phase of the sampling clock is then adjusted so that for example the signal magnitude increases or um, there are several algorithms for uh, timing error estimation but however um, here the loop closes the timing error estimator then uh, sees that the error is reduced and then it is satisfied and the third approach is a pure digital timing recovery so the sampling clock is free running, the timing error is present and um, then we have a timing error uh, estimator 2 as a closed loop controller. But here the error information is given to an in interpolation and resampling part and digital circuit or a computer software too. And this interpolation and resampling part then tries to adjust the, the signal phase um, in the digital domain but this has a drawback for example uh, remember the, the poor case um, where the sampling clock is 
orthogonal to the input signal then of course the signal here is zero and there's nothing which can be interpolated and resampled yeah so this is only possible to to a certain extent but um, in reality um, the case which we con have considered in the previous slide here is just a boundary case so you will um, always add some margin if you are an e engineer so you will not operate with frequencies which are exactly half of the sampling frequency so you will add some margin for example it's just 90 percent of this uh, half of the sampling frequency so you will always have a signal here which can then be interpolated and resampled so you in, in reality it is possible to do the timing recovery in a pure digital domain <laughs>